Hey guys! Welcome to Gunpla TV. This is episode number 247. That means we are three episodes away from the 250. Wow. Quarter of the way to a thousand. And halfway to 500. And halfway to 500. We'll have to do an episode 500 special like Sid did for 200. Yeah, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> well, that's 253 episodes away, so Yay. it's okay. <laughs> but yes, we are back again, and I have part of a good Julius. Maybe not as much as you guys were expecting, but there is a reason for that, which you will see later in the episode. And today, mm. finally, after a few weeks of nothing Gumpla related coming into stock, we have a big release that just came in today. It is the Master Grade Version Ka. Double Zeta. Zeta. Double Zeta, Devil Zeta Gundam. Not to be confused with ZZ. <laughs> Not the ZZ Top. It's a ZZ Top Gundam. <laughs> yeah, ZZ. And this uh, one has the premium decals. Yes, this is all. If you were to order this during this initial, like, first batch, yeah. the premium, the first batch run of the Double Zeta, you are going to get this version called Premium Decal. Yeah, so unfortunately, if you back order the item, you know, if you order from the second run, it's not going to have those premium decals. Right, so get your orders in as soon as possible if you do want to get premium Yeah, decals. and on the website, we do differentiate between the two versions. Um, so if it doesn't say premium decal in the title or right. it doesn't mention it in the comments, it does not come with the stickers. Okay. I mean, stickers, <laughs> decals, decals, so be careful. Uh, gotta get it correct. Yeah, so we I, have, so, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, we have it clearly stated on all of the Gundam in the campaign. Oh, that's right, there's quite a few of those. Because there's more. This is all, yeah, there was, I saw yeah, there was a bunch of the them Yeah, the Shinanju, version call, all of those. Oh, Sinanju. Maybe I have to get that one for myself, actually. Don't think I ever built the Master Grade Sinanju version call. Really? Oh, now is the perfect time. <laughs> you could have a double car special. A double car. All right, so we are going to get this built, but I have to say there's going to be a little bit of a delay before you guys are going to see this one built because later this week, I'm headed to Tokyo. Yeah, for the big hobby show. For the big hobby show, that's right. It is time again for another Tokyo hobby show, so I will be there giving you guys a good live report of the show what's going to be new let's find out yeah Maybe and some exciting announcements from bandai from hopefully bandai and all the other manufacturers and kotobukiya kotobukiya who knows um, who knows and that is called the all japan model and hobby show correct if you guys want to look it up so so that will but, be later this week and we will cover it all we will indeed so be sure to stay tuned for our coverage from the event all right, but today we do have at least a little <laughs> something to talk about. The head of something. The head of something, and what a lovely head it is. All right, so let's do a quick review, or a quick heads up <laughs> look at the Godrillus the Ogre head. All right, hey guys, we are here with Godrillus the Ogre. Boy, isn't he a giant. All right, well, I guess not exactly the entirety of Godrillus the Ogre, but we have a head that we can talk about for a little bit. So let me let me actually kind of tell you. Uh, so I brought this kit home last week, and you saw the size of that box. This thing was just monstrous. I bring it home. I'm just lugging this thing upstairs, and I get it on the table and I open it up. This thing opens up, the box opens up like a suitcase. <laughs> nice. And inside of the suitcase is like individual little boxes and it's really just a box completely full of plastic parts. I'm like, oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into? You were the one who asked for it. <laughs> I was indeed. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to getting this completed at some point, but dear goodness, I'm not going to be able to finish all of that in one night sitting like I could usually do with like an HG kit and actually just this head part itself has about as many parts as like I would usually do for an just a regular small HG kit so today we're going to be taking a look at the head 
and we're gonna take a look at its articulation first. You're gonna wonder, like, wait, it's a head, it doesn't really, not much articulation to talk about, but it does have some articulation. All right, so for this head, it can, well, uh, not open the mouth yet, but he does have a neck, so his neck can pivot up and down. So you get that kind of, hello, he can do like a nod, like, hey, hello. There we go. So that's kind of cool. And one thing, I built that, um, what do you call it, the scorpion one. I don't remember the name of it exactly now. But that one... The Hexagear. No, 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 no. no oh, the Zoid. The Zoid, From like the Zoid. a year ago. From a year ago. I, I can't remember the name of that scorpion one. But that one went together pretty well. And the parts fit nice and tight. And it wasn't really like sloppy or loose. Everything really was nice and tight. And so far, the same can be said for Gujul, it's the Ogre. So this is kind of like maybe a newer one. Because I know some of the older Zoid kits, they kind of maybe tend to fall or fall not really hold together too well but so far this guy's doing pretty good everything fit together nice and tight so that was nice and impressive in addition to his neck movement he also can open up his mouth to display his fine metal silver teeth. metal teeth well i mean there's his... it's a plastic kit they're not actually metal <laughs> not but actually i'm sure the metal. real zoid has metal teeth the real Zoid has nice, I'm sure it's really sharp metal teeth, but yeah, these are plastic, but they are finely molded, so like, you kind of got like a nice, like, sh sharpish, sharpish edge to it, so that's pretty cool to see, and pretty cool to play with and build. In addition to the mouth, like other Zoid kits, you always have a pilot kind of sitting somewhere in the head. The Death Stinger, that's what it was called. The Death Stinger also had a pilot sitting inside of his head, and that one had a really kind of cool head that you would open up, and you, then you would find the pilot on the inside. For this one, you, you have this big, clear plastic piece here, and you can see when you open this one up, it's got a nice hinge to it. You kind of have like the reddish, these are clear plastic parts, the reddish uh, eyes for Godzilla the Ogre, as well as the pilot sitting here in the middle there you can see him there now one thing that kind of i had trouble with there's nothing that this pilot kind of like plugs into when you put him in there he just kind of freely sits in the seat and there's this console that you kind of lift up in order to put the pilot in once he's in you push down the the, the console but when I notice when I push down the console, it just has this effect of pushing him to like one side. So he like scoots over to one side once the mm. console is down. I'm like, no, sit straight. It sounds like you need to get yourself a set of photo edge seat belts. <laughs> I need something, yeah, something to hold him in. Maybe I could probably glue him in, but no, I don't want to glue him in. He's meant to just sit freely in there. But yes, when that console is pushed down, he just kind of always scoots to the side. Or if I do try to really get it straight then the arm will fly off and we don't want to be having that but with that console down though he sits pretty securely snug in there he doesn't go flying all around inside the glass that's nice and you do have some nice different colored plastic parts these aren't movable pistons but they look like real pistons because they're molded in silver and kind of goldish parts and that's kind of all that really can be said for the head of good Julius the ogre the parts are nice crisply molded they've got some pretty great detail to them and i'm really looking forward to seeing this guy someday he's going to be complete and it won't just be here it's going to be monstrosity on top of this table so please stay tuned and keep watching for more parts of the good Julius. All right, well, I hope to have more finished on this at some point. I'm going to be very busy with the new Double Zeta that came in, too. So I'm not exactly sure when I will have more on this build. But there's always these weeks that there's no Gundam kits that come into stock. Right. And whatnot. And I'll be building it slowly over time. In addition to Gundam kits, it just depends on how much I want to build. <laughs> But anyway, there is also a reason that I was not able to finish a whole lot on the Gojulus, and that is also because of this Tokyo Hobby Show that is coming up. If you have watched our videos from the Hobby Shows previously, you might remember uh, the guy from Boss Builds, Brian, 
He now works for another HLJ subsidiary, subsidiary called Beaver, and what they do is they import kits from around the world to Japan. And inside this, uh, the Beaver booth at the show, there's a bunch of model kits, but there's all these model kits, and you gotta wonder, who, who builds these model kits at who the show? Who builds them indeed? Who hmm. builds these kits? Could um, it be? Could it be? Our who? very own? <gasps> who? Lindsay? Uh. No. <laughs> Sid? <laughs> yeah. Ryan? No. <laughs> it's me! <laughs> Yes, for this upcoming hobby show, I had the privilege to build, and this is from kind of a new model, model manufacturer in China called Very Fire, and this kit has actually been a kit that I have actually wanted in plastic for a very long time. This mm. specific shape has never, uh, never before been available as an injection plastic model kit. They've had resin kits of it before, but those are a bit oh, trickier yeah. to, to do. So an actual plastic kit, I was very excited to see this one become available. And because Beaver is the importer for this kit to Japan, I got lucky and I got the chance to put this together. So this is the 1 700th scale USS Montana. So let's take a look at what I built. So here we are, and this is the Very Fire 1 700th scale USS Montana. And some of you might be wondering, what is a Montana? <laughs> Because I think a lot of people, they know the Iowa-class battleships. So you had the Iowa, the Wisconsin, the Missouri, and the New Jersey. And those were the famous battleships of World War II. And what the Mon Montana-class, this ship was actually never built. It was originally designed by the U.S. government, and it was originally ordered into production as well. But the war, World War II we're talking about here, the war kind of took a turn and really, I mean, after Pearl Harbor and after Midway, it really became quite crystal clear apparent that the age of battleships was pretty much done with. Battleships were no longer really important as far as, uh, as far as battles would go. I mean, they would still have, they would still play an important role in the war as far as like doing bombardments of coastal defense and that type of thing, but the original intent of the battleship to fight other battleships, that was just something that was long gone. And so the Montana never never ended up being built. But part of it did, but I'll, hmm. part of it did. If, if anybody is living in California, in San Diego there's an aircraft carrier called the USS Midway. The bottom part, the whole of the Midway, was actually the same hole that they had designed for the Montana class. They just ended up using that same hole design for the Midway class. And that's how you ended up with the Midway class aircraft carriers. But anyway, let's talk about this kit itself. Yeah, you've put a lot of work into the details, so thank you. To check out. I did. Yeah, if you want to zoom close. in on this. So unlike the usual Gundam kits that you see here on the show, actually I think this is the first time I've been able to have a chance to bring on like a real scale model kit to the show. So this is something that you, when you get it in the box, it is just straight gray plastic. It does not snap together. There are photo etched parts, everything. You really have to build this, spend the time to build this one together. So I started this kit on after I finished that Yamato ship that I did the other week. So I started it around the 9th, I think, and it ended up taking me about a week and a half, two weekends basically I spent to build this ship. So it wasn't too bad, but it does take quite a bit of time. Because yes, you do have to paint this. The gray parts of this ship were painted in GSI Creos Mr. Colors Haze Gray, which is part of a special US Naval color set that they have released. Uh, the whole red is basically just Mr. Color straight from the bottle, Mr. Color whole red. And then for the all the American uh, battleships and a, a lot of other ships too, they have like a black band around the waterline that was just painted in straight up uh, flat black. And that's about it for the colors. Now, 
because I do build a lot of Gundams, I do have some other Gundam stuff uh, available to me. So you see like these little portholes on the ships? I actually did that with just a Gundam marker. <laughs> you have that really, really fine Gundam marker with a fine tip. And that's really, that's all you need. Just using that Gundam marker was good enough to paint all of the, the portals on this yes. on this ship. Can you point one out for us oh, on goodness. the screen here? Okay, uh, ha, 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 ha. let's see if I can see where am I looking. Actually, can let's... you even see them? I can't even see. Maybe, <laughs> maybe here, I, I'm trying to see. Let's see. The, the yeah, head. I think you're pointing to one of them. Yeah. It's so tiny. There's like a little tiny black there dots on the ship. So these are like the windows. There you go. See? These are like the windows on the ships. And then traditionally ship modelers, because they, they probably don't think to use stuff like Gundam markers, what traditionally people would do is they take little tiny, tiny drill bits and they'll drill out these holes so you get the same effect. Wow. But when it's at this such a small scale, I really cannot tell much of a difference between just using a Gundam marker to do these portal windows than actually drilling it out. Now, you, if you can uh, zoom over to this part on the front of the ship, Let's see. On this tower, oh, now there, are, there are some portals on the side of this tower. Uh, there you go, up here a little bit more, if you can go up Let's a bit. Zoom out just a teeny bit, there we go. All right, so these are actually like holes that were drilled and pre-drilled in from the manufacturer. And can you tell much of a difference between these holes and the ones I colored? Uh, no. <laughs> no, right? It looks exactly the same. So. When you build scale model kits, sometimes you have to like, you have to de like decide like what battles are you going to fight? Is it worth the time to do this when there's when nobody's really ever going to notice that you have done such a thing? Did so, you paint the windows too? Which windows would those be? Oh yes, for the bridge. Yeah, for the bridge. Yes, actually the bridge. This was all done with just using a Gundam marker as well, so it works perfectly for that. And I'm really clumsy when I hand brush. Mm. So just using Gundam Marker, I was able to get really clean black windows on the bridge without having to bother with a paintbrush or any of that stuff. And it looks it looks really fantastic yeah, having just done that. So yeah, if you, as you can look here on the ship, I mean, this has got stuff that we don't see on like Gundam model kits. All of the, the photo etch railings and just the antenna at the top of the ship. Oh, maybe mm. you can. Now, now um, the railing... Did you paint it gray? Yes. So for this photo I'm going to zoom in real quick on the railing there so we can see the detail. So all of the railings all along the bridge and along the boat oh, yeah, itself. Oh, you can really see all the railings in yeah, here. Yeah, those are all photo etch. This is all photo etch. And this tower too, here too is photo etch. And there's a, there's a radar dish. Not radar. <laughs> I think it was radar. I don't remember exactly. So tiny. But yeah, these parts were just all photo etch and you have to sit there and bend them with little tiny tiny pliers wow <laughs> if you bend it too much you only get like you only really have like one chance to do it cause, <laughs> so if you bend it wrong too many times then they tend to break and, yeah it's and you're very kind of, thin metal it's very thin metal so you get screwed <gasps> if you don't do it correctly so do you paint them before you put them on the ship for this project i did so what i do is you in the box you get a oh well, you don't have to zoom out All in right. the box you get a a just a flat thing of photo etched metal so what i do is i'll take a metal primer i was i just have tons of these metal primer spray cans available to me so i just take it outside and i, I do the metal primer on it and then i'll take i'll go to my airbrush i'll take out my airbrush and i'll paint it right there on the just just on the the, the sprue, I guess you would call it. It's not really a sprue on the photo etch sheet. So I paint everything before I remove the parts because the parts are only connected by very, very, very tiny, thin parts of metal. And when you cut those metal parts off, you can't really tell like that there was no paint in that area anyway. So that works great. And the planes, what color do those come molded in? Oh, the planes. The aircraft if you want the... to zoom over to the planes yeah. at the rip back of it. So yeah, the planes also have tiny, tiny and little decals in. on them. So the planes were painted because this ship is the Montana. Oops. So I imagine it would not have been available in the war until late war. And by the end of the war, Navy, U.S. Naval aircraft were starting to be painted in what they called midnight blue which is a very dark kind of blackish blue looking color. And this GSR 
GSI Creos has a color for that in their Mr. Color line. So all these paints I'm talking about, unfortunately we can't export these paints due to regulations, but they are widely available here in Japan, and you can find them in other countries as well. But yeah, these paints, they all basically all the plastic parts in this kit were same, were gray. So I have to paint everything, and these were just painted in uh, midnight blue from GSI Creos Mr. Color. But the windows, the light blue on the top for the windows, that one actually I just hand brushed using a new uh, paint color line they have here in Japan from GSI Creos called Accretion. And accretion paints are really great for just hand brushing, and they come out like pretty solid. You don't have to worry like oh, painting a light color over a dark color. Yeah. It it works pretty well. I didn't have to do too many coats, but it's just so tiny the amount that you are painting. Now the other thing um, that sticks out, of course, is the wooden deck. Oh um, yes. Is that real wood? This actually is real wood. This is a wooden. Well, they, they call them like deck seals, wooden deck seals. Okay, so it's a sticker. It is a sticker. So like if you build Gundam kits, you kind of rec you, you'll know about stickers, but this is actually wood with like a layer of glue that's been added underneath of it, and you just take it off like a sticker. But the glue, unlike the Gundam kits, the glue on the bottom of these wooden seals is really kind of pretty strong, so you only have one chance. <laughs> To get this wooden seal on the deck so you have to be really careful when you're putting these wooden seals on the decks of ships because if you make a mistake or you get the alignment off and then you go ahead and try to fix it there's a good chance you'll end up tearing that deck as you take off the seal to try and and fix it and what strategy that i have come up to deal with this problem is when i, I build the ship kit i'll take the hole and i'll tilt it upside down and then with the wooden seal deck, because you have to put the seal deck on before you have all the other small parts, so there's nothing else on it at that time. And then while it's upside down, I kind of start from the top with the wooden seal deck, so that way the seal, the gravity will hold the seal down so it doesn't get, accidentally get stuck to the rest of the hull. And then I'll just slowly work my, work the, the sticker onto the deck as I'm kind of holding it upside down. So that way the seal hangs down, it's not sticking to the deck, and I can work slowly try and get the alignment correct and that's how I go about doing these wooden seal decks okay what else should I mention about this just lots of lots of bending with tiny little pliers <laughs> <laughs> I was grateful I didn't lose anything for this ship this time so that was a plus oh, it's it was a great ship it has really nice detail verifier did a pretty good job on this ship so if you guys are interested in building a ship kit I definitely recommend it it's fun but you really do need to have good eyes and some very very tiny tools <laughs> and stable hands and yeah and pretty stable hands that always works and just try to try to do it as best as you can there are other tips and tricks that uh, we could talk about but Oh goodness, I only have so much time. <laughs> All right, so gosh, is there anything else that I should mention as a bug flies in here? As you guys kind of saw before also, this ship is also, you can do it as a waterline. They call this waterline when it just sits there like that. Or it's available as the full hull. I, I kind of like to have waterline models, so I didn't uh, glue it onto the hull yet, but I, paint, I went ahead and I painted the hole up and it just can sit on there at the Tokyo show when it's on display. As long as no one touches it. As long as no one touches it. This ship actually doesn't come with a display base. I borrowed this from a, a different kit. I just needed something for this episode to kind of keep it up and nice and viewable. Alright guys, well thank you for indulging me and watching me yabber <laughs> But a scale model for once in... <laughs> a surprise scale as a, model. As a, a surprise scale model for, for once. It was, it was an interesting build. It was a fun build. And maybe someday in the future, who knows when, we'll see another scale model kit appear again. So yeah, that was a bit of a difficult build, that ship. Yeah, but, I mean, you put a lot of detail into the painting. It looked yeah. great. Thanks for saying that. <laughs> I'm sure everyone will admire it at the hobby uh, show. Maybe. I hope I, I just hope I get it back in one piece. <laughs> <laughs>
you never know. You always see these people taking pictures with the cameras. They get really close. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, don't drop your camera, please. Or, or the worst now is it shows in other places too. People taking pictures with the iPad. Oh, oh come yeah. on. Can, don't you have at least like a, an iPhone or like a, an actual camera? An iPad? You're going to bring an iPad to a hobby <laughs> show and then hover over someone's model kit with your iPad? Yeah. That's so nerve-wracking. But... They also I have, guess. you know, the big uh, lights on top of the camera. They look ah. so top-heavy. I'm just worried the guys uh. around me are <laughs> going to drop them. Yeah. You never know. Accidents happen, so... But we'll see. Hopefully I do get it back. All right, so I think that's about it. We do yeah. have some comments. Let's look at the from comments. the last week's episode. Okay, I've got two here. Oh. First one comes from Mugen, who says, please do more Frame Arm Girls reviews. Ooh. And another difference between MG and Full Mechanics. And like, the MG had a cockpit and pilot figures while Full Mechanics does not. Is this that is true? true. I did not mention this. No. I, I just forgot. So Mugen knows his stuff. Mugen does? Mugen does? Yeah, they have the, usually Master Grades, they have the little cockpit. Like, well, this, I mean, yeah, like this like guy that does. Guy. Then they come with a little figure, and you can put the figure inside. And that's kind of cool, because it gives you, like, that realistic feel. Like, this yeah. is, like, the actual scale that it is. <laughs> this compared is how to this, small you would be. Right, this is how small you would be sitting inside of it. That's kind of cool. But that is something I did forget. <gasps> Thanks for how the reminder, you? Mugen. <laughs> okay, next up is from B, who says, Great Me. show, guys. Not really into Zoids, but looking forward to seeing the review of the Godzilla the Ogre. I've been pronouncing Basilard the same way as Todd did. <laughs> but Base speaking Lard. of Iron-Blooded Orphan kits and the Double Zeta version Ka, have you seen the latest voting poll on Gundam Info regarding next possible version Ka kits? Ooh. Uh, without trying to start any controversy, which kit on the list would you guys like to see get the Ka treatment next? Okay, so do we have a copy of that poll? Um, Actually, I do. Oh boy. I printed it out. All right. So on this Gundam info poll, what kits are they? Are they have or what are the op voting options? I should say. Let's see. We've got the Barbatos Lupus Rex. Okay. G Self Gundam A G A G F X. F X. Uh, double Orisizer. Mm -hmm. Am I pronouncing these correctly? Destiny Gundam Freedom. Double Gundam. Double Orisizer. New Gundam. Uh, the Gundam DX, God, Gund <laughs> God Gundam, and Z Gundam. <laughs> and Z Gundam. Okay, so you'll get the double Zeta. So now the original Z Gundam as a version car. I can see the mm. the Barbatos is getting a lot of votes. Yeah, it looks like Barbatos is in the lead. The only, thing, the only problem I have with the Barbatos version car, and that would actually, from that list, that might actually maybe look the coolest. Yeah. But for the Barbatos, we already have the full mechanics. And then there's the high resolution, yeah, kit as well. So, uh, and that's a pretty big kit too, isn't it? Is it one one hundred scale? The or? high resolution is also yeah. one one hundred okay. scale. So, so we've got something similar in scale. Yeah, we kind of already similar have in quality, maybe. But I know that at least for my opinion, with the one that I would personally vote for. Mm -hmm. Now this kit never had anything released in 100 scale before, so I kind of would have to vote for the G self. Oh yeah, the to G be self. Honest. I mean, the anime uh, Gino Reconquista. Yeah. It, that was kind of. Meh, A lot of people had mixed reviews mixed on feelings. that. Some people yeah. love it. It's it's Tomino, so it's like the original creator's anime. But it was kind of yeah, it was. Eh. Yeah. But the G self itself was kind of a cool looking mobile suit, so that mm -hmm. would be kind of cool to see the G-Cell finally get a Master Grade kit. Not only a Master Grade kit, but a version ka. So, but we'll have to see. I mean, God Gundam, that would be cool. Z Gundam, that would be cool. But for now, me... What about the Devil Gundam? Has that ever gotten <laughs> an, an, an MG version ka? The Devil Gundam? Ka? No, because isn't that like <laughs> going to be like huge? I know, but I mean, it would be so cool. But, that would be cool. But I mean, like, have you ever seen it? It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. They had <laughs> like, an old kit of that. Yeah, they have a really old one, but oh my god. Like, it just... That would be better for the RE line, if they yeah. were to do it. Because they always do those big honky suits in the RE line. Someday. Someday. Devil Gundam. 
Well, yeah, that'd be cool. Like, if they did, if they did the God Gundam in like Master Grade version Ka, mm -hmm. and then if we got like an RE of the Devil Gundam at the same around the same time, that would be a cool set. Yeah. I would love that. I would dig that, and I would build it for you guys on Gunpla TV. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I look forward to that if it ever happens. If it ever happens, well. <laughs> but hey, you know what? The show is coming up. Who knows what we'll see. This is right. New announcements on the way. Yeah. I don't think we have heard what the December release will be yet, mm. so. Who knows? And you know, who we knows? do uh, cover that, like, as we see them at the show, so right. be sure to check it in. Be sure, yes. Be sure to check back for our review from the hobby show. Okay, so comments, I think we are good. Now, yep. we did have a kit to give away from last week, and that is the Gundam Midar. A lot so, of people were excited about this one. They were, because this is a really cool-looking mobile suit, I have yeah. to say. And the rum random number generator gods have chosen comment number... 16 Ooh. and this goes to mold runner congratulations mold runner and your comment is kind of a long comment actually almost nothing beats the sharpness in in details of koto kits sometimes the edges are so crisp you can almost look through it compared to this the latest gundam kits lag in surface details especially when it comes to the armor parts I recommend the new Z Knight Series 2 of Kocho. Okay, I'll have to look into it. And when it comes to cats, <laughs> painting is the part when cat fur becomes a problem. Oh, don't even mention <gasps> that. I, cat fur. I don't think I can ever paint a kid at home. Could you imagine? You're like, trying to airbrush. I constantly... <laughs> cat hair. It just floats through the air. Cat like, hair. <laughs> I bet I can find some cat hair on me right now. There's one. You know, I bet I can find some of your cat hair in my car. <laughs> <laughs> I have a white cat, okay? So it just, uh, it shows up on everything. Indeed, indeed. Oh, cats. They're so much fun. Yes. All right, well, congratulations to Mold Runner, And we do have something else to give away for this episode. Something a bit smaller, but, 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 but. It is another origin kit, so you do get the stupendous detail. It is HG, but origin. Mm, so this is nice. kind of a cool looking kit. This is the Zaku one, as piloted by Shar Azanabu. Who has a lot of Zakus. He does. As I've come to find. Kind of maybe probably his like original Zaku. Isn't that kind of cool? Looks cool. Sid did all. Oh yeah. Hey, did he put a decal on it? Yeah, too? Sid put all the stickers on there. Oh, they're stickers. Yeah, these are all the stickers. They don't come with water slide decals, but stickers. It looks good, though. Yeah. So, if you guys would like to win the Origin Zaku one, all you need to do is go to hobbylink.tv and find episode number 247 and post a comment. And let us know what you think. And that's all you have to do. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's about it for this episode. Yes, and... Todd said you can look at our reports for the hobby show, but we will also be covering it live on Facebook, ah, Twitter. Twitter, okay. We won't be covering it live on Instagram or Tumblr, but we will post some of it. Okay, so yes, be sure to check out the Facebook pages for up-to-date information from the show, and that will be Friday the 29th, I th Is it, think. Today is the 21st, right? <gasps> <laughs> I think it's Friday the 29th, Japan time. Yes, so JST. it's going to be. It starts at like what, Thursday 9 a.m. or 10 a.m.? Yeah, we'll be there pretty early. So. But yes. So around but, 10 a.m. JST. Um, so if next. next uh, not next week. But later this week, Friday morning, around, or not Friday morning, but maybe Saturday morning. Gosh, I'm getting my times all confused. <laughs> all these time zones. Don't quote us, please. Don't quote us, but <laughs> later in the week, check us out. Facebook, Twitter, we should be getting our reports up from the show. And I think that's going to about do it for this week's episode. Okay. All right, we will be back uh, after the hobby show. We'll, we'll have a, a week break because of the hobby show, so we'll be back in an extra week after the hobby show reports. And we'll take a look at the Zeta, double Zeta then. So thank you guys for watching, and... We'll see you next time. See you next time.
Bye-bye.